Okay then, so what I'd like to do today is a very gentle introduction to three-dimensional manifolds. So I suppose the first thing to say is what a manifold actually is. Now many of my previous videos have been about things like two-dimensional manifolds. Basically a two-dimensional manifold is just a, a surface with boundary. Um, more generally a manifold is a space which has the property that um, if you were a little guy in that space and you just looked around you a small distance everything would look flat so if you imagine a little ant walking around on this torus imagine it's a solid torus um, if that little ant just looked at the space within a small circle around themselves it will look just as flat as the plane and uh, manifolds have this property okay so we've talked quite a lot then about two-dimensional manifolds i.e. surfaces we've talked about um, tori and we've even talked about some non-orientable manifolds but what I want to do today is talk about three-dimensional manifolds now these are really interesting for at least two reasons one reason is because they're fundamental to physics I mean essentially the universe is a three-dimensional manifold um, but just like in 2D we can have spheres and toruses and many other kinds of 2D manifolds there are also many kinds of 3D manifolds and so we want to understand what they are so that we can guess which kind of topology our universe has I mean it's not immediately obvious that the universe is flat it could be that if you go off in a rocket ship um, away in the universe and you fly far enough you end up going back to where you started from mind-boggling as that sounds uh, if the universe is the right kind of free manifold it really could be like that anyway I want to get right to it so basically um, let's go to something fairly simple which is the torus so here's a torus and here's a kind of 2D illustration of a torus so what this illustration basically means is that the left hand side is glued to the right hand side and the top's glued to the bottom so let's think about a, a diplodocus um, who's walking around on this torus so off the diplodocus goes off the left hand edge of the torus and they reappear on the right okay then perhaps they see some food up here, they wander up here and as they go off the top edge of the torus they reappear on the bottom edge so essentially um, when they walk off one boundary they come on on the opposite boundary that's what a torus is like I mean if you want a more visual representation you just glue the top to the bottom like this glue the left to the right and you end up getting a torus that looks like this but we want to think about things in 2D so this kind of uh, picture where we think of the top and the bottom edge as identified and the left and the right is identified is um, very useful for that so okay we can just ramp that idea up into 3D so here is a hyper torus this is a three well this is it my illustration of a three-dimensional manifold called a hypertorus and it basically works in a very similar way to the torus the idea is just that we've got a cube or in this case a cuboid and um, we think of the left hand face uh, identified with the right hand face front to back first front is identified to back and the top is identified with the bottom so what would it be like for our pterodactyl friend here uh, who can fly by the way uh, what would it be like for them to live inside of this three-dimensional manifold well, let's think about it suppose they're in the middle of the manifold and um, let's say they decide to fly forwards so if they fly forwards they go through the front of the manifold and they just reappear in the back okay just like in the torus really and similarly, if they decide to fly through the ceiling, then they just end up coming back up through the floor. 
And similarly, if this pterodactyl flies out of the hypertorus to the left, then they fly in from the right. So you could almost make a kind of 3D model of this. You can imagine some kind of tunnel which um, leads out from the front and plugs into the back and similarly from the top to the bottom and the left to the right. Um, now remember though, in actuality it has to hold for the entire face, not just these little windows I've cut out. But um, you can see that basically all the hypertorus is is just a cube with opposite faces identified so that if you go off one face you come on you come back into the uh, manifold from the other face um, and there's actually some really fascinating software um, which is um, which you can use to visualize this I, I want to just say a, a sort of shout out to I think his name is Jeffrey Weeks certainly his surname is Weeks and he wrote a wonderful book called The Shape of Space and I'm really borrowing a lot of ideas here from that and he also made some fantastic software that you can use to actually visualize um, what it would be like to be living in some of these 3D manifolds. Okay then so let's get on to some more interesting kinds of manifolds so um, once again before I go into 3D let me go to 2D. So I want to talk about the Klein bottle now. You might have seen this if you watched some of my earlier videos. So the Klein bottle is pretty similar to the Taurus in the sense that the top is glued to the bottom like a cylinder but um, it has this difference that um, like there's a kind of twist because essentially it's supposed to identify this arrow going in this direction with this arrow going in this direction. What that means practically for the Diplodocus is that if they walk off this, um, this boundary like this, they end up coming back on here because they've actually gone through some kind of twist to get there. In fact, when they come back in from, the, from this side, they're actually going to be kind of inverted. So if the heart was on the right side of the body before, it'll be on the left side of the body afterwards and so on. But it's okay for our Diplodocus friend because all they have to do is um, do another traversal of this surface and they end up going back the right way around. This is kind of like what you see in a Mobius strip. Anyway, things aren't quite so disorientating for the Diplodocus if they decide to walk up because in this kind of direction the climb bottle is pretty much just like a Taurus. If you go off the top, you just come out at the bottom at the same relative place and nothing strange happens to you. So essentially, you can think of a climb bottle as a sort of twisted torus, if you like. Um, and it has a property that if you go off the right hand side at the top, you come out of the left hand side at the bottom and so on. So is there an analogy in three dimensions? Is there a kind of hyperkline bottle? Well, yes, there is. So um, let me tell you about it. Again, I shall use my box. Um, and the thing is here that it's again, it's like a torus in certain directions, and it has this twist in other directions. So just like the hypertorus, if you go out of the left hand side of this manifold, you end up coming out. In the right hand side, um, sort of unaltered, just like in a hypertorus. Uh, similarly, if you go down through the uh, floor, you just end up coming back from the ceiling, just like in a hypertorus. The difference is that if you go out through the front, say at the right hand side of the front, then you end up coming back at the uh, left hand side of the front. So um, there's a kind of twist here that you've gone through. Um, well there's a kind of twist in the connection between the back and the front meaning that anything that goes through um, that, that exits this, this cube on the right hand side 
ends up entering it on the left hand side. And also, the pterodactyl comes back in um, kind of inverted, so that you know if they had the if they had a red eye on the left and a green eye on the right, then when they've done a when they've uh, done a traversal of this, then they'll have the red eye on the right and the green eye on the left. So um, you know that's a quite a funny world to be living in. It'd be very interesting if our universe had a shape like that. However, it's it's not that much more dramatic than the Klein bottle, really. It's it's pretty much just like the Klein bottle with an extra di dimension added on. So a good question then is, are there any truly new kinds of behaviour that we can see happening in a three-dimensional manifold that we couldn't see happening in a 2D manifold? And the answer is an emphatic yes. So um, I'm just going to show you one example today. Um, and that is, there's a special kind of manifold which has no an analogy in 2D. And it works like this. Um, this side, the left and the right, they work just like a hypertorus. So you can fly in on one side, fly out, and then you just end up coming back in on the right with no alterations. Um, similarly, you can um, fly in through the front, let's say, out the back, and just come back in through the front. And it's just like a hypertorus in that respect. So essentially, all that's happening here is just that the uh, right face is identified with the left face, front face identified with the right face. The difference is what happens when you go through the ceiling. So when you go through the ceiling of this three-dimensional manifold, what happens to you is that you actually come back from the other side with a 90 degree twist, okay? And so if you fly through again, you end up coming back in with a 90 degree twist. And if you do it again, another 90 degree twist. And if you do it again, you end up coming back just like you started. So basically, this kind of manifold, um, the left and the right are identified, sort of, you can think of a kind of tunnel or something connecting them. Similarly with the top and the bottom, but the front and the back, they have a different kind of relationship. If you like, um, you sort of take the front of this box and twist it by 90 degrees, turn it around and then identify it with the back of the box. That's how you get this manifold. And there's no analogy in, uh, in 2D for that. And there, are very, and there are lots of other fascinating 3D manifolds. In fact, Understanding the kind of things that can happen in 3D space, um, you know, like the classification of three-dimensional manifolds, has been an open problem for like a hundred years or more. And it's only very recently with the work of um, sort of a famous eccentric Russian called Perel Perelman, uh, amongst others, that um, that these problems are finally starting to be solved. And it's very, very interesting because um, we're getting to the point where we can actually make a full classification of the different three-dimensional manifolds, just like we did for the two-dimensional manifolds, the, the surfaces with boundary. And um, what does that mean? Well, what it means basically is that we can make a catalogue of all of the different possible shapes of our universe, which... I think is a pretty uh, amazing thing for us um, sort of, you know, almost monkey-like animals to be able to do. Um, okay, so thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.